Welcome back. It's time for this week's Capital Report with Pat McGuigan of CapitalBOK.com. Well, Pat, Super Tuesday has now come and gone, and Oklahoma definitely stood out. Uh, your comments? Well, uh, Trump didn't win, but uh, he still had an impact. He got the fourth highest vote total. What was fascinating to me is to just remove party labels and just look at raw numbers. Bernie Sanders on Super Tuesday got the most votes of any individual, and you just kind of roll that tape mm -hmm. and play it again. Uh, second was Ted Cruz, third was Hillary Clinton, then Trump, and not too far behind Marco Rubio. It looks like Oklahoma uh, was maybe having an awakening about Mr. Trump a little earlier than some of the rest of the country. I have no idea at this point because the delicate advantage uh, is huge but far from a finished job uh, for Mr. Trump. You know, the question I have is if uh, the nomination of Donald Trump puts Republican control of the U.S. Senate in play, or makes it more so, because it's inevitably going to be a rough year just because of the numbers for the Republicans. And uh, if it costs the Republicans seats in the House, um, that's a pragmatic consideration. But those are just elections. When you look at what Mr. Trump stands for, you quickly reach the conclusion, I don't know what he stands for. I knew what he stood for for most of his life until the last couple of years. I said last week, and I meant it, that every Republican running was better qualified and more suited to be president uh, than Donald Trump, and I still feel that way. Um, and I hope that uh, somehow he's not the nominee uh, due to uh, a reversal of his fortunes in the, with the electorate. Now, having said that, be a little more cheerful and perky. I'm just in shock over uh, Bernie Sanders' victory. An avowed Yankee socialist defeated the former first lady of the state next door, Arkansas. Uh, he did it the old-fashioned way. He worked really hard. And it was interesting to see the not tactical but strategic level decision they made to come in here and work hard. And it paid off for him. He's got more delegates than she does out of this state. Pretty amazing. Yep. All right. Uh, you like to share some non-political stories with us every once in a while that uh, have an impact on the state, its future. Uh, you have one for us this week. Well, Bob Dylan Archives coming to Tulsa. I think it's an amazing story, and I give all credit to uh, George Kaiser, the George Kaiser Family Foundation, a guy whose philosophy on some things is a little different than mine, but who I respect immensely, much like, much like I respected my late uh, boss, Edward L. Gaylord, both of them made a habit of giving away a lot of money in their lifetime. I value several of the people who work for Mr. Kaiser personally, uh, Ken Levitt, uh, Margaret Erling, M Mimi Tarash, Amy Santee, who, people who have worked on criminal justice reform issues. I just say salute to the Kaiser Foundation for the role it played in bringing this uh, wonderful archive to Oklahoma. Just a quick word about uh, the huge loss for the state, Aubrey McClendon's passing. Yeah, the Aubrey McClendon I knew, I didn't know for uh, controversy. I knew him as a Boy Scout leader and a guy that my wife and I would run into on weeknights at the state fair with all of us seeking uh, corn, corn on the cob from those smokers. Uh, I liked him a lot. He was supportive of the City Sentinel newspaper you know, when he didn't need to be advertising. He did it purely as an act of charity for various good causes in Oklahoma City. That's the Aubrey McClendon I knew in some, and uh, I'm pretty shaken over his loss. You can read more about these stories and others at capitalbeatok.com. For Pat McWilliam, I'm Alex Cameron. Have a great day.